Joining me now in an exchange exclusive is Splunk CEO Gary Steele. Gary, welcome. Thank you so much. Great to be here. So just talk to me about what drove the beat last quarter. You know, we just saw really good execution across the entire product line. I'm super proud of the team. And I think it, the combination of um, meeting the demand for our security buyers, meeting the demand for our, our observability buyers, and doing it in a really efficient way, we were, we were super excited about um, being able to hold OPEX at a really low level. Oh, so, so it was kind of twofold. You both had a resilient demand for, I always think of you guys sort of part cloud, part cybersecurity company, you know, sort of for, for those of us non-specialists somewhere in the middle, resiliency, I know you always talk, but, but also partly what you just said about controlling operating expenses. Just talk a little bit more about what that means in, in practice. Yeah, so in the quarter, we held OPEX down 3% year over year while delivering um, ARR growth of 16%. So that combination, I think, was really well received by the investment community today. Is that, you know, kind of keeping wage gains modest? Is that, a, you know, a, a workforce size or adjustment issue? Is that other kinds of expenses? You know, we've been on a journey to um, drive expenses down. So we're leveraging, for example, we're leveraging global talent centers where historically we've been very concentrated in California. Um, we're also just being super thoughtful about how do we drive efficiency in the operations of our business. And we're seeing that across how we think about real estate and the way we think about using outside resources. We're just being super thoughtful about um, where efficiency can be had and then how we can drive it into the bottom line results. And just connecting some of those dots, are you able to save on both real estate and employees by going to a workforce that's maybe, you know, not even in the U.S. or in, in lower cost areas? Well, we're really balancing that. We've got an amazing team um, spread across the U.S. We're really opening up these talent centers to tap um, global talent markets as our business becomes more international. And in doing that, um, the overall, our overall real estate footprint, frankly, we, we've saved a lot of money on real estate and there's more opportunity there as well. So we're on this journey. We think we've made tremendous progress, super proud of the results we delivered, but there's, there's always more opportunity out there. Yeah, that's very interesting. So let's turn now to kind of the top line, what's going on with the customers. Uh, you said, as you've seen this whole year, and we've heard from many other companies in this space, you've seen choppiness in cloud migrations. Why is that? You know, a migration just represents a project, and it's an incremental project that has costs associated with it. And so organizations can still get the value and the benefits of Splunk and use it on-premise without going to the cloud. And so in this more challenged economic time, we've seen some hesitation on the part of customers to make that move to the cloud. They can still get all the benefits of Splunk, but they can do it without making that migration. Now, we fundamentally believe long, over the long haul, there's so much value and opportunity in getting to the cloud. And so we're very optimistic about the future and what the future holds in terms of, of cloud. But in this more uncertain macroeconomic environment, people have slowed that down. And how is artificial intelligence affecting your business? You know, we're very enthusiastic about the potential of AI. We just came out of our user conference um, in Las Vegas in July, where we laid out basically our roadmap for AI. And we see tremendous opportunity. And what it, what it translates to is just better outcomes for our security users and better outcomes for our observability users. So in the security operations center, for example, how do we just make it simpler and more automated and less onerous tasks be performed by individuals? And so we can really knock down a lot of the work that is um, manual and effort that can oftentimes is repetitive that we can ultimately automate. So we're very bullish on where we think we can go with AI and the potential that it brings to all of our customers. And so when you see NVIDIA's revenue going from $7 billion to, you know, almost $14 billion in a single quarter, does that make sense to you? Well, I think there's, there's just a tremendous amount of interest. I spent a lot of my time with our customers understanding what they're thinking about. And literally the first question is, what are we doing in AI? Because it's on everybody's mind. And so that translates back into how do you ultimately build out the capabilities across the tech stack to enable that to happen? So I think the demand curve is there. Do you think people, now the next question people are getting as well, are, are, are enterprises gonna be able to show monetization of AI, not just deployment, not just installation? Do you think they'll be able to show monetization in the very near term? I think it's going to take some time. I think the near term, you know, it's just going to take some time. And in reality, I think organizations are planning where I think it it, value, it benefits our customers is 
it should take less human resources in a security operations center over time. Much more can be automated. And you can probably get better outcomes as a result. And so I think from a customer point of view and how they're planning, I think they're being thoughtful about where they begin to see those benefits, but the potential is all there. That's fascinating. Gary, thank you so much. I really appreciate your thank perspective you. today of all days with both your business and NVIDIA's kind of bringing it full circle. Uh, Gary Steele is.